All right, I got my three leg blanks out of the clamps and ready to go. What I've done is take my template and set it on the uh, tightest uh, blank that I have. Uh, this is the one that I had to uh, trim off this edge and so it shrunk it a little bit this way. And I've traced the line of my template here. And, I, and I've also held it away from this edge a little bit, which gives me a little more margin for error. If I were to put it tight, I'd have even more uh, distance to go uh, this way. But I wanna, I wanna still leave some room for, for error here, just in case. And so I've taken my taper jig, set up my stop, this way with the angle and that and, the, and I've also removed one of my stops uh, yeah that's the way I want those anyway and I'm going to say that that's pretty close right there and this is still going to go over This is about a sixteenth. This is more than that. Let's see, that's pretty good right there. parallel. Uh, they're not perfect. I mean they don't they're just uh, maybe uh, less than the width of a paper gap in between here. I'm happy with that. It's uh, finished uh, right out of the planer uh, and not using the joiner to flatten one face. Um, I ended up with a pretty nice piece here and um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that this will work. So the only thing that I notice on one of these is that that one not that one, this one, this one. Yeah, this, this one right here. Right here on the end, the glue joint is not quite closed or not quite tight. I think if I planed that some more, it would go away. Uh, if 
this might be the one that I uh, cut back this way and didn't get, get it quite uh, cut back far enough. But that little bit right there, you're not going to see that because that's going to be on the inside. Uh, this is the glue joint here. This joint is going to be, first of all, I'm going to cut some off of the bottom, but it's going to be to the inside of the table. And you will never, ever see that. All right. So uh, the next thing to do is take these and re-reference this edge. Now that I've got these, uh, like I say, reasonably flat and parallel, I got to get this squared up to this, uh, and then I can then I can start moving forward. Just a skim cut here to see where I'm at and also I'm going to have to trim my fence on my W here a little bit. So uh, I'm going to get all those cuts done first. set this up, I referenced this edge off of here and found out that this was a little bit off. So I came back to check this and this is indeed just a little bit off. So I need to recut all these and, and get this set correctly. Um, when I put my template on here, feel right there that I'm just over. So I need to back my fence this way a, a tad and uh, like I say recut these, just skim these one more time. Then I can hopefully use this reference this way to set this miter gauge up and uh, put a stop on here and run my final cut that way. I double checked it as well doing this. Laying on my straight edge here. And then butting this up. And now it is parallel. But that's when I discovered that I was off because I used my uh, template to double check. A slight gap down here. See that how that you know that slight gap down there turns into an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to get that corrected. All right, I set this angle this way using this registered against my sled, which is a zero cut. And that looks good. And then just as a double check, which is what I did before to uh, make sure I was in the, in the right ballpark and that they'll be parallel. And I match these up. That is good. Nice and tight. So I'm happy with that.
All right, they are nearly perfect. I mean, there's just a, just a fraction, you know, a thousandths or less than that difference between the three of them. These edges are, are parallel, which is the most important part to me. Uh, I did stand one up and measure it. I'm at 27 and a 16th. Uh, parallel lines from from the base and the other difference is right here now there is I can feel this uh, a lot right here these are very different uh, this gets a little low then it gets high this one stays pretty consistent this one gets a little low out here so I'm gonna have to put my template on here and use a router bit and clean those up. Uh, incidentally you can see from these drops I mean here's the rough cut there's the clean cut with that 80 tooth blade but you can see the grain match here on these uh, clean cuts how well that matches up by flipping that triangle that one's nice that's a, that's a nice nice grain match so that that technique worked out really well for me thing I've ever done but I, I'm, I'm really secure in, in the fact that I've got something to grab onto here and keep my hands away from that bit. I've got my pieces mounted on this aluminum extrusion so I do have clearance from this here and then like I say I've got some something to grab like there I can grab here get this started and make my run. And, uh, since I'm removing such, such a little bit of material here, I think I, I should be okay. shade of brown even even after I planed it but it's it uh, didn't take much that's how much I removed right there just to just keep uh, you know a few passes probably I don't know I shouldn't say a few quite a few <laughs> so it's cleaned up I like it so that's one Ready to go. It sits pretty nice. Let me get, come over here. So 
Well, I've got to uh, you know make that cut down there, but I'm not going to do that until I get the base done. I'll work on the other three, and then it'll be time to uh, go to work on that making the round base.